Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Can Do That DIY for another doll repaint video. Today we're making something super cute inspired by one of my favorite childhood toys, My Little Pony. For this project, it's kind of all over the place, so for this video we're going to do it the steps and kind of just see what happens. Alright, let's get into it. So for this project, we're using an Avia Trotter body I got on eBay, combined with a Frankie sign head, forearms, and hands. I love Frankie's face mold so much, it's so pretty. She's probably one of my favorite dolls to customize. I've pre-sanded the body a little bit off screen, and to start things off with the doll, we're going to fill in these back holes and get rid of the tail. Let's start by chopping off this tail. So yeah, I'm going to grab my wire cutters and kind of just hack at it and pull at it and yank it out. There's some leftover plastic in the base, so I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and a pair of tweezers slash needle nose pliers to yank that out as well. Then just some more sanding. As I sand, I work my way up in the grit of the sandpaper, going from rough to fine, so that the surface doesn't remain rough and allows the paint to stick later. Now let's fill in those holes on our back with some epoxy sculpt. And of course I'm wearing gloves while I mix it, and then just sticking it on. I'm going to use some water to help smooth it out, and then allow 24 hours to cure. Next, we're going to spray paint the body. As a base color, we're using Tommy Color for Plastics TS60 in pearl green. So I did about three coats off screen while wearing a ventilator mask. I think it looks pretty good. The color is obviously a little bit off, but we're going to fix that later on. Next, we'll put the head back on the body. And to start fixing the torso color, I'm going to use my white pan pastel and start brushing it on. After a few coats, you can start to see a difference. This is the third coat, I believe, and at this point, I decided to start working on the face as well. So I'm going to start by highlighting the face with the same white pastels. I'm highlighting the cheekbones, the nose bridge, and the forehead, and then blending it out with a clean brush. And also getting the chin as well. Then I'm going to continue to build up the highlight on the body. I'm going to do this at the end of all of my repaint coats until the body matches the face. Or at least close enough. Next I'm highlighting the little hair poofs above the hooves. And also the knees. Then I'm going to highlight the top of the hip and the back. On the next layer we're going to work on our eye shape with a black watercolor pencil. I'm going to sketch out the general eye shape for the right eye, and then do the same thing on the left eye. I'm also using my eraser to refine the shape as I go. After that, I'm going to draw on the iris using my magenta watercolor pencil. I think today we're going to do a side glance. I'm going to lightly fill it in with the magenta, and then go in with my light pink and then fill it and blend it together. Then I'm adding the upper and lower eyelids using the teal. And yes, I'm aware that the pencil is super tiny. I think it may be time for a new one. Now I'm adding some magenta pastel to darken up the irises. And I didn't realize I wasn't recording, but off screen I did a lot of blushing with my light pink pastel. I did the nose bridge, the body, and the cheeks. Now using my teal pastel, I'm going to start contouring the eyes.
Then I'm going to highlight the eyelid using my white pastel. The body blushing is looking really good so far. Now let's color in the sclera with my white watercolor pencil. After that, we're going to darken up and redefine the eyeliner, and also enhance the upper and lower eyelids. After I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side off screen. Then I'm going to outline the outer edges of my iris with my black watercolor pencil as well. Now let's continue to build up the opacity of the irises with my watercolor pencils. Again, we're going to use the pink and the magenta watercolor pencils, as well as the light pink and the magenta pastels. I'm going to use the lighter colors towards the bottom, and shade towards the top of the dark colors. And using the same light pink pastel, we're going to blush the nose bridge, the cheeks, and the lips. Awesome! Now let's continue to contour the eyes and the lips with my magenta pastel. Then using my white pastel, I'm going to highlight the nose, the eyelid, and the brow bone. And using my white watercolor pencil, I'm going to add texture and highlight to the eyes and the lips. Now I'm going to shade the sclera and the iris with my black pastel. This one's a glittery black, but you don't really see the glitter. I couldn't find my black, so I just used this. It works just as well. So I'm kind of marking my pupil position, and then just shading the rest. Then I'm also adding a little bit of shading to the outer eyelids. But not too much, I'm just going to blend it out a little bit and then use my eraser to refine the shape. Then using my black watercolor pencil, we're going to continue to work on the eye a little bit. I'm going to continue to redefine the shape, color in my pupil, and then do my lower eyelashes. Make sure your pencil is really sharp when you do the eyelashes. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to use my white watercolor pencil to continue to detail the eye. Alright, now let's use the magenta pastel to deepen up the iris and to do the base for our brows. We're going to brush it on and redefine the shape with our eraser. It might be a good idea to mix in some of the lighter pink pastel as well. I just realized that at some point while making this doll, I decided to blush your fingertips off screen. Now let's add some more teal to the eyelids. After that, I'm going to highlight the lip edge with my white watercolor pencil, and then blend it out with a Q-tip. Now let's add some freckles to her face with my magenta watercolor pencil. I'm going to make sure it's really sharp, add some freckles, and then blend it out with a Q-tip.
Here's a super pro tip. If you're like me and you make a mistake like smudging the back paint with your finger, like that right there, fix your mistake by covering it with glitter. As you can see, I'm going to bedazzle her body with some chunky pink iridescent glitter glue. A lot of life's problems can be fixed with glitter. Try it out. So I'm going to add glitter to the back and around the waist, around the tail, and the high hip. And while we're working on the body, let's make those hooves magenta. On the next layer, we're going to create some texture in the eyebrows by adding some hairs with my watercolor pencils. I'm going to use a couple different colors. I'm going to use the light pink, the magenta, and the white. And of course, using my eraser to refine the shape as I go. Now using my teal watercolor pencil, I'm going to connect the bottom eye line with the inner eye line. And add a little bit more texture to the eyebrows and the lips with my magenta watercolor pencil. Alright, it's time to add some catch light to the eyes with my white acrylic paint. And a really fine brush. We're just going to squeeze some acrylic paint out and dot the catch lights in the eyes. I tend to do them different every single time. Alright, those look pretty good. Of course, let's refine the shape with my black watercolor pencil. Let's continue to add some highlight to the sclera as well. Now let's use some white pastel to highlight the brow bone. On the next layer we'll continue to work on the details all over. We'll add some texture to the eyebrows and the eyes. And add some more opacity to the hoof color. After a layer of mist is super clear, we'll add some glitter to those as well. And with that, painting the body is complete. Now let's move on to the outfit. So here are the pattern pieces I made for the outfit. Here's the top pattern piece. I'll need to cut two of these. And here's the sleeve. I'll cut two of those as well. I already cut the fabric off screen, so here it is. We're doing a striped pink cotton with a solid pink cotton for the lining. And then the sleeves will also be the same striped cotton. The sleeves are not going to be attached and they're going to be just on the arm. going to be gathered at the top and at the bottom. I'm going to sew the bustier off screen. So here's the bustier fully lined and with a little top stitch around the edge. We're going to cinch the top to make it a sweetheart. I'm going to use my needle and thread, poke it through and loop it around, and then mess with it until I get the cinch right, and then knot it off. Alright cool, that looks pretty good so far. Now let's add some sparkle by adding some iridescent paillettes. I don't know if you know the difference between paillettes and sequins, but paillettes are actually flat and sequins are cut. Fun fact. So here it is after all the paillettes are sewn on. I think it looks super cute. Now let's work on the sleeves. I went ahead and hemmed the top and the bottom off screen. Now we're going to sew the inseam of the sleeve. 
After that, we'll cinch in the top and the bottom. I'm going to put a gathering stitch around the top of the sleeve first, put it on the arm, and then pull it tight to cinch. Then I'll knot it off, and then do the same thing for the bottom. After that, I'll do the other sleeve off screen. Alright, that's pretty good for the outfit for now. Now let's move on to making the tail. I made webs for the hair out of acrylic yarn mixing two different colors of pink off screen. We're going to be using that for the hair and the tail. We're going to start by taking a piece of yarn, gluing the hair web, and then wrapping around the piece of yarn upward. I'll transition to the darker pink towards the base to give it a nice ombre effect. The two different colors have a very subtle difference, but it adds a nice highlight and low light to the hair. I have to do a couple of layers of the darker pink at the top to really thicken up the base to fit into the hole. After it's all dry, I'm going to super glue it into the body off screen. Then we'll move on to the hair. We're going to be using the same acrylic webs and gluing them onto the scalp with super glue. As usual, I'm going to start out with the bang piece. We're going for a really big 90s side swoop aerial bang today, it's going to be really cute. So I'm going to start by gluing on the weft a little bit at a time, and really follow the hairline. After that, I'll section out the part, and then continue to glue on the remaining hair weft. After the bang, we'll move on to the back, and then work our way up until we get to the top. Then we'll add some hair wefts to the top for the part. And while I do that, I just have to say thank you so much for watching. Also, remember, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects and doll repaints. Liking and commenting on the video really helps the channel and helps the video get out to more people. Also, I always love the feedback and like to hear what you guys think about the doll, so make sure to do it. And while you're at it, also follow us on Instagram, at ikoodothat.diy and at kawaiidollies. The Kawaii Dolly's Instagram is a lot older than my YouTube and has a lot of my old work, so make sure to check it out. So here it is so far. Now let's glue on the part. After that we'll press the part down, and then do the other side. After everything's all dry, it's time to move on to styling. I also sewed her into the bustier off screen. I'm going to section off a little bit on the left side. This looks pretty good. Cinch it with a piece of thread. Pull it to the side. And then sew it to the head. I'm making sure to go through a weft as I sew. Then I'm just going to train this bang a little bit. I made a hairpin using a floral bead and a pin off screen. I just super glued the two together and then bent the pin and then cut off the excess. We're just going to put it into the hair. Then let's add the sleeves to the arms. After that we'll add another floral bead and pearl to the tail. Using a piece of doubled up thread, I'm going to sew through the floral bead go through the pearl, go back through the floral bead, and then tie it around the tail. And sometime between this and the next thing, I cut her bangs off screen. Alright awesome, that looks great. Now let's give her some lashes. Using some fake lashes, I'm going to bend them to shape, measure them, and then cut them. After they're the right length, I'm going to use some Elmer's glue wall and glue them on. I'm using a pin to wipe away the excess glue and put them into place.
After both sides are done and dried, it's time to gloss the eyes and the lip. Alright, let's grab our little tiny brush and start glossing. We're going to start with the eyes and then move on to the lip. It goes on a little hazy but dries nice and shiny and clear. And to finish this doll off, I think she needs one more accessory. We're going to use some beads and make a belt. I'm using a pink and a raspberry bead and going every other for the top strand. For the lower strand, we'll do slightly different and do two beads for every raspberry bead. This will tie in nicely to the stripes that are in the blouse. I'm just going to knot the sock, then add a flower bead and a pearl, and then work on the second strand. The flower bead acts as an anchoring point for the two strands. And after I knot this to finish it, the doll is complete. The next thing to do is a doll photo shoot. So here she is, here's the finished result. I'm really happy with how she turned out, I think she looks pretty great. She's definitely giving off My Little Pony vibes, specifically Minty. As a little boy I was obsessed with My Little Pony, to the point where I'd get into fights with my sister and my cousins over their My Little Ponies, and my parents just had to buy me my own. So yeah, definitely love how she turned out. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below, so let me know. If you have any ideas for future projects, I'd love to hear that too. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed my first video of the year. Make sure to check back in on the channel because there will be more doll repaints in the future. And for the remainder of the video, just enjoy her glamour and beauty in the rest of the photos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!